Rovio's latest launch angry boards, Dream Blasts of X, 9 million, 7 dollars, 7 million, in gross bookings, during its first three months out, an income boost that helped the company report a 12.3% increase in gross bookings for its whole games business, at launch, that puts Dream Blast as Rovio's third highest earning title. Just behind Angry Birds Friends, on its top earner Angry Birds Tour, Games Gross Bookings, a figure Rovio uses to capture in-app purchases and in-app advertising sales, came in at $65,873, million, $3 million, at the first quarter, AOR, 3% increase from the $58,000,000, million, $2 million, Reported during the first quarter of the year. Prior, Angry Birds still continues to be the company's big earner in its games business, bringing in $32 million, $35, 6 million in gross bookings all on its own. The company says that the JAMEG agreed W48% year on year and has generated $285 million. $370 for million in gross bookings since its 2015 release across its top 5 games including Angry Birds Tour, Friends, Dream Blast, Angry Birds Match, and Angry Birds Pop. OVO also says it's been able to maintain stable daily active users and monthly unique players as well. The influx of new players for the January release Angry Birds, Dream Blast, helped to offset tenant decline in older titles, thanks in part to the 23, 7 million, 26 dollars, 4 million the company spent on user acquisition this quarter. As a whole, the Rovio Group's revenue increased by 7, 8 percent year over year, and came in at 70, 9 million. $78, 9 million, this quarter. It's a boost led by the game's business, which reported 66, 3 million, 73 dollars, 8 million, in revenue, as revenue for Rovio's brand licensing segment, held by just over 50% year over year to far, 6 million, 5 dollars, 1 million, due to low revenue from the Angry Birds movie. News brief, Konami has announced their branding of its New York office, from 4K Media Incorporated, to Konami Cross Media NY Incorporated, with their renewed focus on it. As detailed in a press release, the change was made to reflect the company's new approach to intellectual property rights management for games, like Yu-Gi-Oh!, Bomberman, Country, and Frogger. This mood seems to finalize Konami's desire to further distance such studio from its roots as an office under Fuck is Entertainment, which oversaw the English dub of the UGO and in series before Konami acquired it. The New York outlet is the subsidiary of Konami Digital Entertainment, Incorporated, which focuses on brand management and production for multiple platforms. The press release continues. Yuta KOSE will lead the New York office in the role of president. Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford offers his thoughts on the Epic Game Store. Gearbox Borderlands 3 is one of the latest games announced to be skipping Steam for a few months in favor of the Epic Game Store, a decision that Studio CEO discussed on Twitter recently. His thoughts on the nature of the relationship between Steam and the Epic Game Store were captured in a lengthy Twitter thread and later rounded up into a more readable arrangement on Reddit. It's a long read, but one that offers a look at the benefits he sees in the Epic Game Store, both in terms of the store as its own platform. And as an important source of competition for Valve's long dominant Steam storefront, right off the bat, he does note that the Borderlands 3 exclusivity, Call, was one made by publisher, 2K Games rather than Pitchford or Gearbox, 
So while I may have some influence, I cannot force anything, and this ship has sailed, so to speak. Pitch further notes that he has decades of experience working with the two now competing companies, and says that there are fundamental differences between the mortal visions each company has to guard its own storefront. In the case of Valve, Pitch for sex a lack of competition has enabled the company to reinvest the steam income into other endeavors, rather than the stock itself. They have had no external force sufficient to challenge their revenue share, and no external force sufficient to motivate a sufficient reinvestment of revenue. Epic, from Pitchford's point of view, is differently set up from Valve right now. Partially because Epic is a public company with shareholders, he says, are very motivated to reinvest in the company versus Valve status. As a private company, all of those plays are going to be fed by a business that is not taking cash out of their system and putting it into individual pockets, but was putting all of their cash back into their system, says Pitchford. The competitive star that happens to be the leader in 10 years may not be Epic's star, but it probably will not be Valve as an Epic's moves right now are opening the door and paving the way for a vibrant competitive economy, he says later in the thread. Competition in stores is going to be absolutely best for consumers and probably good for developers and publishers as well. The stores that tend to win are the stores that offer the best to their customers. It's very difficult for customer interest to begin with one star. These comments are only part of his thoughts on the matter. The full thread can be found on Reddit, and the full reply to it on Twitter. Part 3 of a four-part series, in which a new game about an avocado and a young inventor sketches out new ideas for both television and video games. So what's going on with Inado? The direct manipulation mentioned earlier, and the sense that this lens of Touching TV itself is in part enabled by the game engine, presumably Unity, and its ability to drop interactions on top of 3D environments mapped onto pre-filmed sequences. In other words, you control the avoid in a body, moving a real-time animation over a set of filmed physical backdrops on the scenes, a bit of studio, or of other locations. By apparently moving ever freely in that world, you lean into the point of viewing in. Although, exists on a separate layer, superimposed onto the set, yet thanks to real-time lighting effects and 3D scanning the bumpy green protagonist, feel situated within, rather than upon, and so do you, this apparent freedom, albeit necessarily limited. M O V E S A V O B A Y O N D B A N D E R S N A T C H, with the latter really only a stack of pre-filmed elements, piled up in a somewhat editable sequence, one ends up feeling rather disengaged, particularly when the experience is overlaid with the cynicism judging the narrative, and this set is essentially laying out, in this balance of fleeting, laying out. It is a quite different experience to traditional console games, like Call of Duty on Battle, K, C, which stressed the lean in F engagement, with sometimes overly long lean back moments in the extravagant cutscenes, exposition, and spectacle in Call of Duty. Half time commentary in Battle, K, I do love to see the analytics on how often such cutscenes are skipped, with the though. This is a more rat attached relationship, with shorter cutscenes dropped almost seamlessly in and out of lean in gameplay elements, and this are more engaged with the most lean in, lean out. This dynamic capability is underpinned by a fascinating approach to camera work. In gameplay, the backdrops are filmed sequences, without a though, but with the young inventor Billy and other active elements. These are necessarily shot beforehand, 
Yet who told us real time freedom of movement? The thing is under your finger. After all, which could involve numerous camera angles. Playdio have created software that essentially picks the best camera to present in real time. If a doll is walking along a long planar space, like a propped up plan cut wood between two tables, this might be best viewed side on a sort of sonographic view that David Lane might tend towards. Were he given a shed and an avocado rather than a desert town petrol tool. Yet as you reach a decision point, you, the player, need to see what's ahead, so the optimum camera position, they might switch to overhead, at an angle, to enable a glimpse of what surround the counter, having drawn a dotted line in that direction, far of O to follow, the best camera might switch to one behind of O, watching the fruit totter off.